So today, we're going to be looking at a text editor written in Bash. Now, this application is by no means going to go and replace something like Vim or Emacs, but what it might do is actually inspire you to go and create your own text editor, because let's say there's something about Vim you like, something about Emacs you like, something about Kakun you like, and something about a bunch of other text editors you like as well, but there's nothing that actually does all of those things in one complete package. Well, in a situation like that, what you're basically gonna have to do is go and make something yourself. And as you'll see from this video, creating a basic modal text editor can be done in just 230 lines of Bash script. Now, obviously you can go way less than that if you want way less features, but this application itself is just 230 lines. So let's actually go and have a look at bed. Now, looking at it like this, it kind of looks very similar to something like Vi. There's a little bit more going on. You have this bar up the top and this bar down the bottom, but it basically looks like Vi. But outside of a few reused key bindings, that's pretty much where the similarities end. Now, for this video, what I'm gonna be doing is going through most of the features of this text editor and then saying things that could be done to actually improve upon these features. So in its current state, it's entirely usable as a text editor. So I can go and use it about as well as something like Notepad, if you could imagine Notepad as a modal text editor. There's no reason why you can't use this, but there is a lot that can be done to really improve this. So to actually go into insert mode, what you have to do is press I. Now, what that's gonna do is insert a new line and then stick you in edit mode. So it's a little bit different to the way that Vim works. So when you press I, it's going to create a new line. So it's similar to pressing O in Vim. So we can go and you know write a bunch of text in here as you would expect from a text editor. It doesn't tell you how many columns you're taking up, which would be really useful to see. Maybe you just stick that like down the bottom here or something, or maybe up the top in this bar because it is always nice to see how many characters you actually have in a line. Now to get back into normal mode, I'm gonna be using the Vim terminology here just because it's a little bit easier for me to work with. To get back into normal mode, what I have to do is just press enter. Now, another thing with this, as you probably noticed or more aptly didn't notice, is the fact that there wasn't any indication on whether I'm in insert mode, normal mode, or whatever's going on. Basically, you have to kind of remember which mode you're actually in. So another thing that would be nice to have in this would be like a little mode indicator somewhere on the screen here. Maybe, a, I don't know, just a little character that's like N or I, just so I have some indication of what mode that I'm actually in. Now to insert a new line without actually going into edit mode, what we do is just press B. Now, as you're gonna notice off to the side here, we have a new line in here, but if I, you know, start just pressing the letter T, this isn't actually gonna go and do anything. So you actually go and edit that line now. If I press I, that creates a new line, so that's not what we want. What we want to do is actually edit that line, and we do that with the letter E. Now, another thing with this is you can probably tell that there isn't a visible cursor. Now, this isn't a problem with Alacrity. This is actually just a problem with this application in general. It doesn't actually show you where your cursor is. So if I just, you know, start typing in your XVT, we have the exact same problem. It doesn't actually indicate where my cursor is right now, which is a little bit annoying to have. I would actually like to see exactly where my cursor is because you actually can move it to different points in the line. Right now, I'm pressing my arrow keys and if I start typing from this point, as you see, basically it does let me edit at different points in the line, but I don't really have any indication of where I'm actually gonna be editing at. Anyway, moving on from that, if we wanna actually go and traverse the lines, all we have to do is just use the arrow keys. So moving up and down is obviously gonna take you up and down in the lines. And then as we saw before, you can move left and right in a line when you're in edit mode to actually go and insert text at any point in the line. Now with edit mode, what it actually does is starts you typing at the end of the line. So even if you were to go and you know be in edit mode and then move the cursor to a different point, when you go back into edit mode, what it's gonna do is just take you back right to the end of the line. So the next key binding doesn't really make that much sense. So we have an append to line. Now append to line does exactly as you'd expect. It lets you, you know, append to the end of a line, but Edit also does the exact same thing. So E and A 
do the exact same thing. So I'm not really sure why they are both there. I presume the edit is supposed to remember where you actually are in the line, but right now it doesn't actually do that. Now, appending to a line actually can be really useful because sometimes you don't want to go and edit the line. You just want to write some text on the end of it. Now, obviously having the append button is very useful and it would also be useful to have one to edit from the start of a line, but having them do the exact same thing doesn't really make that much sense. And right now anyway, I would just get rid of one of the bindings. Now I presume that edit is supposed to remember your curse position, but for now it's not actually doing that. So another thing you might want to do is let's say that you go and write a bunch of stuff in your document and then you realize at some other later point that you don't actually need some of these lines of text but you still need the line to actually be there. So you still want like a separation between the two paragraphs but you don't actually need that specific line of text. Well what we can do now is we can actually go and press C and what that does is clears out the line but still keeps the text there. Now if you want to actually go and delete the line and also delete the text, what we can do is just press D. So that's similar to pressing DD in Vim. I don't know what the binding is to clear out a line, but still keep the line there in Vim, but I'm pretty sure there is one. Okay, so let's say that we've hit a good stopping point and we want to save the file. So by default, everything is going to be saved into a file called bed.txt. So it actually assigns a file name to this buffer when you actually open it up. Now, this file is going to be saved into whatever directory you opened up bed from. So if you open it up in your home directory, the file will be saved in there. If you open it up in your documents, it'll be saved in there. Pictures saved in there, so on and so forth. Now, this is a little bit different to the way that Vim works, which is in Vim, it goes and opens up an unnamed buffer, and then you actually have to assign a name before you can actually save it. In this, if you want, you can just go and use the default name. You probably should give it a more meaningful name, but you do have the option of just using the default name. So setting the file path can just be done by pressing the F key, and what that's gonna do is open up a little prompt down the bottom here, and then basically you can just type in wherever you wanna save it to. So if you try to do something like this, so let's say we wanna save it to video.txt, this isn't actually going to work. I tried to do this off camera, but for whatever reason, that's not really working. I presume you can probably do the full path though. So slash Brody slash video.txt. I have noticed that in some applications, trying to use the abbreviated version of home doesn't actually work. So if I go and check that now, I'll show you how to save it in just a moment. If we go and have a look at this, video.txt. Okay, that does work, but if you do the shortened down version, so try to save this instead to home slash video.txt, this isn't actually going to work. So if I go and have a look in here now, video.txt, the file doesn't actually exist. So I have noticed this pop up in some applications. I'm not entirely sure what the reason for that actually is, but that is a little bit annoying to see this actually happen. So hopefully the developer goes and fixes this because that's actually kind of a serious problem. But anyway, let's just save it to video.txt because we just want to be saving it into our home directory anyway. And then to actually go and save the file, what we have to do is just press W. And what that's going to do is actually go and write it to the file. So what it does pretty much just redirects all of this text into that file. So let's say that we want to actually quit the application then. Now that we've saved it, we don't need to open anymore. Well, to quit this, it's very simple. All we have to do is just press Q. And if you hadn't saved your file first, it will prompt you to actually save it before it does let you quit. It's not just gonna quit it and then not save anything, which is always nice to see. So let's actually go and reopen bed and load in a file. Now you can obviously load in a file by going bed video.txt. That does work just fine. But let's say that you just open up an empty bed buffer and then you want to open it up from there. So let's just open up bed. And if we want to load up a file, all we have to do is just press L. And like with before, we have to just fill in the prompt. So video.txt and that works just fine as well. Now, obviously, this is by no means an amazing text editor. In fact, it's full of bugs and it's severely lacking in features. But it was also only made two weeks ago. So think of what you can do in three weeks, a month, two months, six months, a year, two years, 
Think of what you can do if you actually spend a lot of time working on your own perfect text editor. Obviously, this isn't going to be something that most people want to do, but if you do have the programming talent and you actually do have the interest in going and making a perfect tool for yourself, there is no reason why you can't actually go and do that. Now, I'm personally happy with Vim. There's a few things about Vim that I would like to change, but a lot of those things can be changed from within Vim. But if you have some other weird use case where you actually do have something you want to do that can't actually be done with any of the traditional text editors, maybe going and making something for yourself actually would be a really good idea. And this is one of the things that I love about programming. If there's a tool that you want that does not exist, there is absolutely no reason why you can't go and make that for yourself. Now, I don't know how well this is written, but it might be a relatively okay starting point if you actually want to go and build something for yourself. Now, as I said earlier, I wouldn't recommend building it in Bash, but I guess you can if you really want to. One of the good things about this, though, is it is... I guess fairly self-documenting. All of the functions are fairly well named. So we have the cursor function, which I guess is for moving the cursor and actually showing the cursor. That would be nice to see, but we have other things like file read, file set, file write, line up, line down. They're all pretty straightforward what the functions actually do. So if you do want to go and write it in Bash, maybe checking out these functions and you know seeing how they work might be a good starting place to work from. So I think that is going to be pretty much everything for me, but before I go, I would like to thank my supporters. So a special thank you to Joachim, Corbinian, Craig, Nathan, Andrew, Montezar, Joseph, Peter D. Road, Tony Donald, John, Mikhail, Spagin, Thais, and Zilva. If you want to go and support my work, there'll be some links down below. If you want to go and watch my podcast, where it's just rambling nonsense all of the time, that is Tech of a T available on Library, YouTube, and some other platforms as well, but you probably also want to know about the audio version, and that is available everywhere you can listen to audio podcasts. And this channel as well is also available on Library, BitChute, BitChute, and a bunch of other platforms as well. And remember to go smash the like button and leave me a comment down below, and remember to subscribe and ding the little bell can down below as well. So I think that is pretty much everything for me, and I'm out.